Thanks, Steve, for the board. Open up for questions on that. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was ugly out there on our end for sure. Uh, feel bad for number one, uh, Alonzo Gaffney, who uh, came to me a couple of years ago. You always get a little sentimental about your seniors, but uh, you know, helped uh, get us to an NCAA tournament. Uh, so to see him, you know, he wanted to come back, and then for him to kind of be put through this tonight to finish his career, it's, it just sucks. So feel terrible for uh, for Gaffney. He's, uh, he was visibly upset at how we were defending in the first half. And, uh, it was one of the few times I saw someone exhibit a lot of uh, a lot of emotion. Uh, you know, uh, and, and then Frankie, you know, if you if you watched the the last uh, you know 15 minutes or so, when I wasn't calling something to get the ball in his hands, I was probably calling it for Gaffney, just because I felt like he deserved to be rewarded for uh, how he was competing and how he was trying to make things happen. And uh, outside of that, we didn't do a good job. This is not acceptable for, you know, uh, what my vision is for our basketball program. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's not, you know, we're not in a good place right now. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible way to end it. And uh, got to get back to the drawing board. All right, we'll open up to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll bring over the microphone. Start when you're here in the front of the show. Coach, obviously, you know, you beat Utah the first couple times, but it was a different team then. Um, not having Perez to kind of be your post presence and draw defenders to him. What was your kind of game plan to try and combat that? I mean, I thought our best chance to win was uh, and have any success in the offense then was, was going to be getting the ball to Frankie where he could penetrate or create a shot for himself or a teammate and uh, and, and Jemiah Neal and, and Adam Miller. Those are, you know, those were the guys. Uh, and then, you know, our, our centers and, and Gaffney needed to just play off of those players' ability to, to create and get, you know, uh, either a shot for himself or get in the paint and make an extra pass to someone for a good shot. And um, we had some good good examples of half-court offense in, in the first half. We had a really good possession. I think Brian ended up with a layup as the shot clock expired, but there were far too far too few of those examples. They uh, give credit to Utah. They, you know, they show the type of postseason desperation that you need to have, and, they're, uh, and, and, and they have you know, really good shooting, and you know, we had a hard time uh, you know, dealing with their three-point shooting. That's been how we've lost the last three, really. We've, we've really not guarded very well, and particularly combined the three-point line. Other questions? Right here in the front. Scott Sandilli, Devil's Digest, for both of you guys, uh, especially for you, Bobby. What does it mean to play in the final Pac-12 tournament, at least of its kind? You just have you know, a vision for something better. You know, it's 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 uh, that that's going to be the lasting memory of, of us playing in the Pac-12. Wow, I mean, that's a, that's a terrible, terrible memory. And uh, nine years of being in this league and coaching in this league, and and it's going to be gone. And that's that's how we chose to to go out. It's uh, it doesn't feel good. No, Frankie, what's so the same way. Frankie, you really played your butt off, played hard every second. Can you kind of talk about what you're kind of thinking as a leader, trying to will this team to a win, trying to will this team to a good performance? Um, I think, I mean, playing hard, that's that's one thing. It's just trying to get guys to all be on the same page and playing hard. Uh, I didn't do a good job of getting my teammates prepared and, you know, getting them ready to play. So, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to lose like that, but I mean, the least you can do is just play hard. Coach, following the loss to TCU in the first round last year, you told us how that elite level of a game was, how the state of the program looked. And now, a year later, as you just said, how it's not looking the way that you envisioned. Where do you think things went, went wrong? Well, I mean, we, we got we to gotta, we gotta revamp. <laughs> The roster, you know, I, I have to, uh, I have to get on the phone, and I've been on the phone, and I have to encourage people that have the wherewithal to try and support what we're doing. I have to go and, and 
you know, especially with this transition. I've watched quite a bit of Big 12 basketball. So it's a strong, physical, you know, these games are, you, you, it's for men, grown ass men in that league. So, you know, we have to make some changes. Uh, I don't know, I just, uh, I feel like you could say a lot of things about me as a coach and, and you could be critical of, of a lot of areas and different things that you may not like about my coaching style and uh, my, my offense, my philosophies on defense, my uh, in-game decisions, my rotations. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into being a coach, but I don't think you would say that he's not gonna fight or battle or get his team ready to compete and fight and battle. And, I failed miserably in that regard because, you know, this is not a reflection of, of my belief system in, in terms of uh, just effort and uh, and will and you know knowing what it feels like when your season's on the line and you have to play for your season and and, and that's the effort that you get. So it's uh, that's my responsibility. I failed miserably. So. That will be a you know, primary um, prerequisite as I start evaluating you know, what needs to get done to rebuild our team. Yeah. Uh, Coach, you talk about the game plan without Jose. What, was there any chemistry problems or just, you know, just general adjustments you have to make when some, something like that happens in such an unusual situation? And, Frankie, yeah, I don't know if you can address that too. What was the week like for you guys? I mean, I mean, it's hard to, you know, game plan when, when us as players don't go out there and play hard. I mean, they they can give us the game plan all they want, but I mean, if we don't go out there and play hard and, you know, try and get stops. I mean, if you see in the first half, every time you turn your head, somebody was open. So I mean, I mean, you can't really blame the game plan for that. Yeah. I mean, as far as as far as Jose, I mean, I, I think it's uh, you know our construction of, of this team uh, and how we played a lot of the year and a half for offense was was uh, what was playing through Jose. He he was the one kind of reliable uh, post up option where he could play some inside out, and, and it was uh, you know all we had was was outside in, and that that's what we were. And then uh, so to have to rely on that solely was was uh, was not easy. So. Um, but yeah, we gotta we gotta you know go rebuild the front court, rebuild everything, just start over. Almost. Uh, one last one here, the third row in the front row. Uh, Coach Jeff Barron, the State Press. Uh, what do you see from Akila Watson and Braylon Green? You guys could build on next season going into the Big Twelve. Yeah, I'm not sure. We we uh, they didn't really get uh, a lot of a lot of minutes to to show you know. <coughs> What they're going to be capable of doing, so it, it's that's going to be a, a tough question for me to answer right now. Thank you. Thanks, guys.